The comet 67P churyumov yarosiminko will be in the news for several months, and it has the potential to spark extensive controversy. Issues could range from electric fields in space to solar system history and the history of Earth itself. A bedrock assumption in the modern science of comets is the claim that the nucleus of every comet harbors water ice, along with frozen carbon dioxide and other volatiles. But paradoxically, earlier probes of comets have only highlighted the absence of expected ices. Comet surfaces are remarkably dry, and only one comet, Temple 1, revealed even a trace of frozen water just a light frost that by all appearances drifted to the surface from the coma. That's the unsolved mystery of comets. And 67P is no exception. Water in the coma, but a surface that is burned black as coal and looks very much like a rocky asteroid. In the standard interpretation, water must be there, but hidden from view. As a comet approaches the sun, we see vaporous jets emerging, delivering dust and gases from the nucleus to the coma. Such observations have fostered the scientific conviction that warming by the sun causes subsurface ices to evaporate. This creates pockets of pressurized gas. As the pressure builds, the gases break through a surface layer of dust to form distinctive jets, often spanning thousands of kilometers. The jets then become the confirmation of the theory that subsurface ices are responsible even if we can't see these ices directly. But there is another view. In an electric interpretation, a comet may or may not contain subsurface ice, but its activity has little to do with solar warming. Rather, this activity occurs as the body traverses regions of different charge in the plasma domain of the sun, a vast and rarefied atmosphere of the sun through which all of the planets move. This sea of charged particles includes an electric field stretching from the surface of the sun to the heliospheric boundary, the limit of the sun's influence. Though exceedingly weak at any particular place, it can hold immense charge across the volume of the heliosphere. As a comet moves millions of kilometers through this electric field, the electrical stresses developing on the surface of the nucleus trigger dust-raising events. First a coma, then the distinctive cometary tail. As the activity grows, it progressively erodes the surface, much like industrial electrical machining processes. The close-up images of 67P provide a direct opportunity to compare the predictions of the electric comet to the standard model of the dirty snowball. We can trace the jets to their sources. Observations are already underway, and no exposed ice patches are reported. Most telling is the stark terrain that has apparently been eaten away to create massive cliffs. The active excavation of the surface gives us a direct view of what was once the interior of the nucleus. Neither the walls of these towering cliffs nor the deep floors below exhibit the ice that the standard model requires. But the problem grows the more active the comet becomes. If subsurface pockets of evaporating ices are the source of jets pushing through the surface dust, then as this activity increases, it would be certain to expose these ices below. Anything accelerated to one third of walking speed will escape the nucleus altogether. So far, at least, none of the erosional activity, not even the concentrated jet activity, has given investigators a first hint of buried ice. Is it possible, therefore, that the nucleus of Comet 67P really could be the rock that it appears to be? 
What might a dry rock tell us about the nature of comets and their obscure origins? And is it possible that this very comet could hold a secret for us about the birth of such bodies in a recent and violent phase of planetary history?